Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been getting a lot of interesting gadgets through the Amazon Vine program lately, and I've got a haul video coming up soon with my latest finds, but I did get in something that I wanted to do a standalone video on because it's a trend that I'm noticing amongst these generic gadget manufacturers. This one is from a company called Kusuvau, and what this is is a little portable display that when paired with your Android phone or your iPhone, will activate the auto features of those devices. So this will be a CarPlay device or an Android auto device. And what you do with this, just like those old TomTom GPSs, you stick them on your dashboard, and now you've got CarPlay in your car if you don't have that capability already. And so I thought I would get one of these in and just see how it works. This one doesn't need to be installed. In fact, there's a bunch of them now kind of like this, some with larger displays. So we're gonna check this thing out here in a second and see how it all works, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. Let's get into it now and see what this display is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at under $150. This one is about $85. And the price, of course, will vary based on who's making it and how big the screen is. Now, this was the smallest one that I could find. It's got about a 7-inch display on board. It is a bit on the heavy side, so it's not something that I think can be suction cup mounted all that easily. In fact, they don't even give you a suction cup mount in the box as an option. They do want you to peel off the uh, sticker here and just attach it to your dashboard. It's got a nice sticky substance under there, although I'm not sure how much of the dashboard will come up with it when you try to take it out. So I would have liked to have seen something more portable, and I'll be on the lookout for that because it would be nice to have one of these things I can just stick in a car and go with if that car doesn't have Android Auto or uh, CarPlay compatibility. You do have some ports here on the back. This is a USB-A port for USB storage. You can put some MP3 files on there and have them play through the device. There's also an SD card slot up here that can do the same thing. This is an auxiliary output because this device will not send audio to your car's Bluetooth system. You have to hook it up with a hardwire. I'll talk more about that as we work our way through the review here, but it does need to be hardwired in. It does have speakers built in. They don't sound all that great, but they're loud enough to be heard in the car, but it's not great for listening to music. This is an AV in right here. It looks like a USB port. There was nothing in the manual about this, nor did they give me any cables for connecting things to it. So I don't know what that port does. But next to it, there is a power port, and they do have a car power adapter that comes in the box. This is a standard USB-C port, so you do get a USB-C output there. This will not work with USB-C PD chargers. It needs the regular uh, 5 volts, 2 amps that you would get out of a standard USB charger. So if you have a fancy PD charger, it's probably not going to work with this. But of course, the one they included in the box will and get this thing powered up. So on that note, I'm going to plug this into power and let's see how it works. Now, a little earlier, I did pair my phone up with this over Bluetooth, and that's how this works. You don't plug the phone into the display. It's all wireless through a Bluetooth connection. And as you can see here, my iPhone is already connecting automatically. You saw how quickly the thing boots up and you get dropped right into the CarPlay interface if you enable uh, the CarPlay feature on the phone here. You will be prompted to have this work as a CarPlay device on your phone on the first connection. After that, you can go into the Bluetooth settings and enable it in there. But as you saw, it was a very quick boot up, very similar to the experience I have in my wife's Sienna, that once the phone is detected, you're good to go. And unfortunately, I've got a pretty bad signal down here, so I can't demonstrate everything, but uh, I did play with all of the apps upstairs where I have a slightly better connection Everything works exactly like it does in my wife's car. So all of your CarPlay enabled apps will be functional here. Audio will play through the speakers built in by default. They are rather tinny. There's no volume control, unfortunately, on the display itself. You have to jump into a menu to do it. So the audio quality is not ideal here out of the speakers, but it does work. And then of course, if you connect the aux connector here, You'll, you can run it through your stereo system. It actually sounds pretty good through that aux connector, so that's probably the best way to go on this, but I'll show you some other options in a few minutes about how you can get this connected to audio. So all in, a pretty good little CarPlay device here that's not all that hard to get started with. Just pair it up, plug it in, and you're good to go. 
Let's do a quick look now at how Android Auto works. All right, here we are in Android Auto. All is working here. I've got it paired up with this Pixel 8 smartphone that in full disclosure, Google sent to the channel free of charge for a review a little while back. And it all seems to be working here just as well as it did on the iPhone side. Android Auto started right up. All the apps work like they're supposed to. So I can jump over here to Plex Amp and start playing back some music here again. It's all going through the speaker. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about on the iPhone side was the Assistant. It works just fine, both on the Apple side, by asking for your friend that starts with S. And then I'll give you a quick demo here of Google. Hey, what time is it? And unfortunately, we are offline right now because there's no signal coming down here to this phone. But you do get an idea as to how it all works. So it pretty much works the same way it does in a car that has this built in. But let's take a look at some of the settings that this display has so you can customize the experience a bit. Now on the Android Auto side, you can hit exit here to jump out of the Android Auto experience. On the CarPlay side, there's a button for home and that will also drop you back out to the phone's menu screen here. And what we can do is jump into the settings and see what options we have available to us. So you can change the language here. You can adjust your Bluetooth settings. Now, in-car Bluetooth is an interesting feature because what this does is it connects the phone's audio to your car stereo while still working as a display for the auto experience. However, what I found, at least on the Apple side, is that when you enable navigation, once you do that, the audio stops playing out of the music app. So this is not an ideal solution to getting audio routed from here back to your car. So I think the best option is either using the cable here or there's actually an option for transmitting over FM to the radio. Not the best audio quality, of course, to do that. But if you jump back to the home button here, go over to your little app button, you can enable this FM transmit feature and you can set the radio station and then uh, get this broadcasting essentially from this to your car's stereo and that would give you the best of both worlds, although you are going over RF and not via something that is digital. So an option, but not a good one there. Uh, you also can, of course, get into your Android Auto and CarPlay features there. This does say it supports Apple AirPlay, but I am on the latest version of uh, the iPhone OS and it does not appear to work. So that did not function well for me. It does, though, support Miracast, which is working on Android devices along with Windows PCs. And then, of course, you have your media players for the storage that you might connect to it. And every one of these things is going to work a little bit differently, but I think generally this is how most of these tend to work. They're kind of a dumb terminal for your phone's auto interface, and I kind of like where they're going with this. I would love to see one that is a little bit smaller and lighter that could maybe attach as a, a suction cup mount so you can take it with you when you're on the road and renting a car or something that doesn't have a CarPlay or Android Auto built in. I would also like to see some better audio output options because not every car these days has these connectors any longer, but it does seem to get the job done and allow you to add uh, Android Auto or CarPlay to an older car that may not have these features at all, and you can gain the benefit of all that your smartphone has to offer. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.